Tell us what's happening in California. Right. Well, they're not just left-leaning. They are far hard-left groups. And what's going on right now in California specifically is we passed a law requiring some very offensive sex ed, forcing teachers to tell little children that uh, at age 12, they have the right to go get an abortion without their parents' knowledge or permission. And the schools will help them get there and help them How fund it. How is this it. getting into our schools? Who's funding uh, this? this? The, who is pushing this is the teachers unions and what's shocking is teachers have no idea people think teachers are these far left people pushing this stuff that is a lie teachers are these most teachers are good loving people and many of them are against abortion and are against sexualizing little children but we are being used by very powerful organizations the teachers unions collect about five billion dollars a year tax-free from teachers and they use that money to push their personal social sexual and political agenda into our schools i'm bruce karasik co-founder of the jewish republican alliance Thank you for joining us today for another special edition of JRA Loudspeaker. We are thrilled to welcome back Rebecca Friedrichs to our show. We'll be speaking with Rebecca in just a few minutes, but first, I want to be clear. I admire Rebecca Friedrichs for her courageous stand against compulsory union fees because she is an advocate for individual freedom and fiscal responsibility. Her legal battle, battle embodied principles of limited government and protection of First Amendment rights. She challenges the status quo to ensure that educators have a voice and a choice in their representation. Rebecca's dedication to educational reform and empowerment of teachers and parents aligns closely with our conservative values of personal responsibility. I admire Rebecca because she is fighting for individual liberty by advocating for teachers' rights to choose whether to join a union or pay dues. Rebecca strongly supports limited government by imposing extensive union influence in public education and government affairs. Rebecca is a champion of free speech by defending the right to express dissenting views without coercion from powerful entities like unions. Rebecca is an advocate for fiscal conservatism by critiquing the use of mandatory dues for political agendas not universally supported by members. And Rebecca is a true leader in the movement for parental rights by supporting parents' authority in their children's education against external ideological influences. One of the most important issues facing our country right now is the open border and the consequences that we are all facing as a result of the Joe Biden presidency and Democrat rule. Sadly, we have a president with a failing memory and we have a society that is not being properly educated on the facts. So I ask and I wonder, have Joe Biden and the Democrats also forgotten about 9-11? Has our school system properly educated our young people on what happened that day and the years that followed? Have the Democrats forgotten that terrorists at the direction of Osama bin Laden entered the United States, were able to bring down the World Trade Center, attack the Pentagon, which led us to 20 years of war in Afghanistan and Iraq and wounded our nation? If they remembered this recent history, if they knew the true facts, then why in the world would they advocate millions of people pouring across our southern border illegally, completely unvetted? Why would they not let the border agents do their job? And if they do remember recent history, then they are deliberately sabotaging our country with drugs, crime, disease, and financial burdens that are weighing on our limited resources. If they do remember recent history, then it is a deliberate attempt to change our culture and political landscape of our country forever so they can maintain power at the expense of our citizens. Fact, when Joe Biden took office, the border was as secure as it has been in many years, maybe ever. Has half of our country forgotten, or maybe they were just never taught, that Joe Biden revoked all of President Trump's executive orders on the border 
As soon as he took office, and those actions caused the very crisis that he's now blaming on Republicans, have they forgotten that Joe Biden on his first days in office, as Sean Hannity recently reported, that the Biden multiple executive orders revoking previous efforts to exclude illegal aliens from the, our census. He then went on to strengthen DACA. He canceled the Trump interior enforcement rules. He halted the border wall construction. He stopped the remain in Mexico policy. He let Title 42 expire. After all that, now they attempt to pass a deeply flawed immigration bill that enough Republicans had the courage to stop. And then Democrats and the mainstream media blamed the whole crisis on Republicans. We cannot and will not be silent about this attempt by Democrats and the mainstream media to erase and rewrite history. As philosopher George Santayana once said, those who refuse to remember history are condemned to repeat it. And I will add, those who are never taught and learn from history are condemned to relive it. Well, thank you all for being here. And now I would like to introduce my fellow JRA co-founder. He's live from Franklin, Tennessee, Mitch Silverman. Mitch. Thank you so much, Bruce. In the early 1980s, one of the greatest rock and roll songs in history came out. And you all know the lyrics, excuse me, all you all know the lyrics starts off like this. We don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. No dark sarcasm in the classroom. Teacher, leave them kids alone. Now, I know the band contains a rabid anti-Semite, but it's eerie how 40 years ago they wrote this song, how much it applies to what's going on today. There's no way they could have foreseen the level of depravity going on in the classrooms. In fact, I don't think anyone was really aware, maybe until the lockdowns, when they did remote learning, parents were home and they happened to walk by and the parents were like, what did the teacher just say? What is the teacher indoctrinating you with? And that woke up a lot of parents. Sadly, we have a lot more parents that still to be woken up. We have a big challenge ahead of us and a huge opportunity. The good news is that the, the very things going on in that classroom are what spurred on great groups to form, like for kids and country. And in some ways, it kind of parallels what happened on October 7th. If you recall, we did a show after that horrible massacre. And I said one of the potentially only positive things that could come out of that terrible day was it's going to wake up some Democrats, specifically Jewish Democrats. And sure enough, I've been reading it in the Jewish Journal every week. Now, they do dance around the subject that's the Democrat Party with all this anti-Semitism, but they are writing about it. And it happened to us in our life. Uh, over 20 years ago, Stephanie and I made friends with a woman in Thousand Oaks who ironically moved to Nashville about four years before we did. She's a staunch Democrat, lovely woman, highly intelligent, not a leftist. And she literally said to Stephanie, you know, maybe I'm not a Democrat because she was stunned and horrified by all the anti-Semitism on full display from the Democrat Party. I saw that as an opening. So I have some rules about openings. You're having a discussion with someone in your life that's left of center. If they're a leftist, don't bother. But if they're progressive, uh, liberal, Democrat, and you see an opening, number one, take it. Number two, turn on the faucet, give them something to drink, but don't turn on the fire hose, okay? So I said to her, you know, it's not just the anti-Semitism in today's Democrat party. There's other issues. She said, like, what? I said, well, what about what they're doing to kids? And she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, how about pornography in the classroom to start with? And she gave me that look like, what are you talking about? As in, I don't believe it. So here's the third rule if you have an opening. Number one, take it. Don't hit them with a fire hose. And do not send right-wing sources. Even though Fox or Breitbart might be 100% accurate and true, don't send it to them. They've sadly been brainwashed as saying, oh, it's Fox. It can't be true. So I took a different approach. And I said, you know what? Don't take my word for it. Do your own homework. Do your own research. Or you could share a video. We've all seen those videos where a parent goes to a school board meeting. It's their turn to talk. And they start reading pornographic material out loud. The board stops them and says, this is totally inappropriate to have that kind of language at an open school board meeting. To which the parent says, I'm reading from my kid's textbook. Okay, so you can do that. You can send that. And inevitably, when you talk to someone and they, they're going to hit you with this line, which irritates me to no end. Well, there's extremists on both ends. This is important. True, there are extremists on both sides, but here is the vital difference. The radicals on the right, whoever they are, 
They're statistically infinitesimal. I don't know who they are. I've not met them. They have no power. The radicals on the left are firmly in control of today's Democrat Party. It is mainstream in today's Democrat Party to side with uh, Hamas and Palestinians. It is mainstream in today's Democrat Party to blame America first and always for the things going on in this world. It is mainstream in today's Democrat Party to have drag queen story hour for little ones and to go along with mutilation of children with drugs or surgery who are confused about their sexuality. That's mainstream. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is when you see an opening, take it, feed them information little by little. Don't be that person that sends them three emails a day. No one wants to be in the end of that. And make sure that they realize how dangerous and wrong the party they're supporting is. And now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing a wonderful person and a powerful voice on our side of things. Rebecca Friedrichs is part of a movement to restore the values and authority of parents, the voices and authority of parents and teachers in America's schools. As a 28 year public school teacher, she was forced to fund unions whose politics and divisive tactics degraded her profession, our schools and our national character. She actually filed a lawsuit. I was still living in California when she did this. Friedrichs versus California Teachers Association brought with 10 other teachers was argued before the United States Supreme Court in January 2016, and it blazed the trail for ending forced unionism and teachers and government employees in all the United States. She wrote a book behind her right now, Standing Up to Goliath. It's her expose of corrupt and abusive unions, and she's a producer of the documentary, Whose Children Are They? Rebecca and her husband Charles founded for Kids and Country, through which they educate and empower Americans to abandon unions so we can restore our republic. Her editorials can be found in new and outlets nationwide. She appears regularly on radio and TV. She's a PragerU host and was a second speaker on the opening night at the 2020 Republican National Convention. Rebecca, welcome to our show. It's so great to be here. What a wonderful intro from you and Bruce. God bless you both. Thank you. And I just can't wait for the conversation. Thank you, Rebecca. Welcome back to JRA Loudspeaker. We're so grateful that you're here. You know, in your book, Standing Up to Goliath, what a great title, by the way. That's that's really a great title. You know, you share your experiences about emphasizing the need for educational reform, uh, about the teachers' unions, the degradation of American schools, undermining parental authority. Can you share with us a few experiences or things that you've come across that highlights, you know, some of the negative impacts the unions have have had on education? Sure. And first of all, I want to give God credit for the title. I prayed for that title for a year, and that's where that title came from. So, Great plus, title. I love David in the in the scriptures. Um, you know, from the first day I was in a classroom, I saw wicked things going on, and the unions were behind those wicked things. So, I'm just going to tell one personal story, and then I'll you know go into some of the wider things that people can probably see just looking at the news every day. I was a student teacher. It was 1987. I was 22 years old. I was bright eyed and bushy tailed. I thought, you know, I'm going to go teach these children and our, our schools are so great. I just thought everything was wonderful. But instead, every single day I watched with horror as the teacher next door to us was abusing her students. She would literally grab them, yank them, scream, literally right in their little faces, scream at them. And I have to say, she mostly picked on the little boys. Why? Because God made boys to be wiggly and full of energy because they need to provide for us and give us security and fight for us. And so here she was not only squelching the amazing energy of these little boys, but she was abusing them. And I witnessed it every day. So I went to my master teacher who was this amazing lady. I, thank God I had her. She taught me everything I know about teaching well. And I said, you know, I'm being taught that I'm supposed to be a, um, uh, you know, I'm supposed to report child abuse. I'm a mandated reporter and I'm seeing it every day, but it's the teacher next door. Nobody told me what to do when it's a teacher. So she set me down. She said, today's the day you learn about teacher unions. And she told me that the, that the district knew this lady was a problem. They knew she was abusive. The kids weren't learning in her classroom. Who learns in that environment? And um, she told me there was nothing 
that could be done because the union was defending this lady. And then she told, and by the way, these kids were first graders, okay? They came up to her waist. They were six-year-olds. Uh, there, there, there's just no excuse for this kind of abuse. So then I watched for years as this lady continued to teach until she chose to retire. I thought that was wicked. So from day one in the classroom, before I even had my own classroom, I was against unions. But then this kind of you know union bullying and, and allowing people to abuse children. And so when I became a teacher, and the union came, they came, the minute you sign your contract, the union's there. And they told me, you know, you, you need to sign to join. I said, oh, no, thank you. Um, I, I don't want to join. And they asked, well, I said, well, the unions let teachers abuse little children. I don't want to be a part of that. I was so naive. You know, they said to me, uh, basically, lady, you want to teach, you'll pay us. And that started my battle, literally, at 22 years old. And I watched my whole career. The unions are against parent, parents having the freedom of choice to put their children in any sort of school they want. The unions want every child in a government-run indoctrination center because the unions are tyrants, and they are uh, behind the destruction of our constitutional free republic. They would like America to be a socialist communist hellhole, and they want to be the leaders of that with their you know, Democrat friends. And unfortunately, these people are doing extreme damage to our children. So you asked for a couple uh, examples from the classroom. I'm going to go back to the 1930s. Early 1930s, American students were reading wonderfully. Over 90% of Americans had outstanding reading skills, comprehension. We had farmers writing sonnets. We were doing great. In the mid-1930s, the unions and their friends start messing around and removing phonics from our uh, from our uh, classroom instruction. And they replace it with look, say, whole language like Dick and Jane, see, spot, run, that kind of stuff. Well, it took them a while. The teachers in the 1930s were screaming, this isn't working. This is terrible. You're damaging the kids. They can't learn from this. But, of course, the unions who know it all, who are so full of pride, which is how we know they're not on the side of God, um, they continued to push this educational quackery called whole language and removed phonics. Eventually, they removed phonics from almost every school in the nation. They are still successful. Most schools don't have phonics, which is why the other day I saw um, I saw uh, some stats that there are something like 54 schools in Illinois where not one child can read, not one child. Okay, first of all, that's evil. That's a very wicked on purpose agenda to destroy the ability of children to read. I taught kindergarten, very easy to teach a child to read in just a couple of weeks. So um, they are purposely undermining the ability of children to read, to write, to compute, to know history. Like you said, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. Um, this is all what I want people to go away with today is this is all on purpose. Don't ask me a question like, how come they would do this? How come they're bringing in sex ed? How come the critical race theory? How come you can't discipline kids anymore? Don't ask me how come. It's on purpose. The unions are on purpose destroying the American free republic by destroying our educational system. So um, they are the root cause of every problem we're fighting, even the open borders. Unions are for open borders and abolishing ICE. And uh, so we have to destroy the government unions, like starting with the so-called teacher unions, before they destroy America. Oof. Um, don't have a strong opinion on that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so, She's Rebecca, right on the money. I, I shared with you earlier today that um, we have a JRA national chapter, and our very first speaker was Roger Simon, who is editor-in-large of the Epic Times. He lives here, and he's a great guy, very intellectual. And I have here front page of today's Epic Times, California Teachers Association's Curriculum of Shame, written by Rebecca Friedrichs. Tell us a little bit about this article. Oh, my goodness. Well, I would say it was about a month ago I get a, a text from these amazing teachers. There's, there's so many incredible teachers all over this country who love the children, who are there to serve, who, who never dreamed their – a profession would be infiltrated and hijacked by a bunch of communists. They, they never saw it coming, right? So these amazing teachers um, are still staying inside the union, trying to change it from the inside. Now, I did that. I was a union rep, tried to change it from the inside. It's impossible. They don't want to be changed. But these teachers are in there 
really not moles because they're telling the union who they are. The union knows these teachers can't stand them, but they go, they keep going, they keep going to these union meetings, and then they feed me the information they see while they're there. So they sent me the, the flyers from the union, CTA, California Teacher Association Solidarity Conference. And at this solidarity conference, the so-called unions are just, they're using the entire conference to propagandize America's teachers, in this case, California teachers. The whole conference is pushing, you know, communist style propaganda, radical sexualization of our kids, all kinds of word salads that I can't even remember. Their, their, their grammar was so horrific throughout the whole flyer. I mean, misspellings. The thing I said in the, in the article was red marks all around. I mean, if I were ed actually grading their, um, their flyer, they would have gotten a big fat F, which is a perfect example to show that these aren't, the unions aren't really teachers. They've infiltrated teachers and they're destroying everything we love. So these teachers exposed, you know, what was going on at this conference. Not, not one of the dozens of presentations was about how to teach better, you know, how to reach children, how to help special needs kids, none of that. The whole conference was about this diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, uh, all about racist um, bigotry, divide and conquer, dividing people by the color of their skin. Uh, it's just disgusting. And so I, I was just cheering when um, Epic Times put it on the front page today. Thank you, Epic Times, because we, we just need to get the word out to Americans that no, these are not teachers and they are not unions. I call them the so-called teacher unions. They are an education cartel and they are destroying teachers and children and our country. And so the faster we can spread the word, the better. Wow, you know, we are so in awe of some of the things that you stand for and that you do. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, how brave that you actually, I don't know if our audience knows that you actually had a case that went to the Supreme Court, Fredericks versus California Teachers Association, and you challenged the right of, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, of the public sector unions to collect fees from non-members, and you argue that mandatory union fees violated their First Amendment rights, and you sought to overturn the precedent that allowed them to collect fees from non-members and if it wasn't for the death of Justice Scalia, you would have won, but I think it ended in a tie. Do you want to talk a little bit about what brought you to bring this case to the Supreme Court and maybe an update on where we are in all this now? Sure. So a little background on what brought me to bring the case. That was God, 100 percent. I was just, you know, doing giving him my first fruits every day, doing my Bible study in the morning. And um, and I'm complaining to God. I'm sure you guys do this, too. I'm going, God, you know why these unions lie every day. They lie in the newspaper. I was getting Orange County Register at the time. Like, I kept seeing these articles about how great the unions are. Now, this is all a lie. None of this is true. All they've done is bully me my whole career. Even when I served as a union rep, they bullied me, you know, and, and they just use mafia tactics to damage children and teachers. And so I'm just talking to God about this. And long story short, I don't know if you've experienced this with God, but typically when you complain about something, he goes, hey, how about you? How about you take that on? So I just answered the call and said yes. And any courage that I had was from God. It, it wasn't from me because I remember when he first, you know, and by the way, I don't hear voices. It's just I'm talking to him. I'm praying. And in my heart, I, I hear that still small voice. And, I, you know, God asks me to start writing editorials. And my biggest complaint to him, it took me three days to say yes to him because I didn't want to end up being Jonah in the belly of a fish if I said no to God or if I said yes and then changed my mind. So um, I talked to him and I just said, God, you know, they're going to they're going to brutalize me. They're going to make me a target. They're going to pick on me. They're going to pick on my kids. My kids were both one was in college, one was in high school, public schools. I said, that, you know, Lord, you're asking a lot here. I don't know if I can do it. And, you know, he told me in that still small voice. I know they're going to do those things to you and worse. And here's what you're going to say. And here's what you're going to do. And here's how you're going to handle it. And I went, oh, wow. And suddenly I wasn't being controlled by fear anymore. God's not the author of fear. That's the devil. He authored the fear. So God had to show me how to trust him, how to follow him and, and have faith in him instead of fear. So that was my first big hurdle. So I wrote the first editorial and, um, you know, 
thinking nobody's going to read this thing. It gets picked up nationally, printed all over the place, because apparently no teacher had ever dared to speak out and say, uh, no, the unions don't speak for me. Or if they did, hardly anybody knew about it. So it just started to go like wildfire. And literally six months after my first editorial, I become lead plaintiff in a federal lawsuit headed to the United States Supreme Court. I mean, my goal was to get one editorial in the Orange County Register. God had a much bigger plan. So uh, it was myself and 10 other California teachers. Uh, and we went to the, you know, we started, of course, in the California courts. We sued not only the California Teachers Association, but the National Education Association, our local unions, and our local superintendents. Nothing personal to the superintendents, but the unions collect their, their at that time, mandatory dues through paycheck deductions. And we said, that is unconstitutional. You cannot use government money to take pay, money out of a paycheck and then hand it over to a private union who then, by the way, uses it to destroy America, the schools, American values, and everything. So our goal was to end forced unionism for every government employee in the United States of America, and that happened in 2018. Uh, the freedom happened on my birthday, actually, in 2018. So um, in the past, there was a Supreme Court precedent, Abood versus Detroit Board of Education, in 1977. And since that precedent, every government employee, including teachers, firefighters, cops, DMV employees, VA, CDC, whoever they are, all required to fund a union as a condition of employment. But once we started pushing back on this and our case was heard at the US Supreme Court, the majority of justices agreed with us. Uh, you mentioned that Scalia died, a very mysterious death exactly one month after our oral arguments were heard. I have had thousands of American citizens, including attorneys who have argued at the US Supreme Court, ask me, do you think that the unions bumped off Scalia. I will not answer that question because I do not know. But the fact that so many people even thought it tells you the, the culture of the unions and the type of things that they are capable of doing or that people are at least afraid of them doing. So Scalia's death did bring a big bump in our case. Our, our lawyers had no idea. They, they had no idea what's the precedent when a, we knew we had Scalia's vote. What's this precedent when a, a justice dies before the written decision comes down? The precedent is the justice has to be sitting in the room when the decision comes down. So we lost his vote. But the good news was, and, and I really think God knew best, we lost at that point. And the justices, we asked them for a rehearing because we knew we'd win with a full court. But the justices didn't give us the rehearing. And we think now in hindsight, it's because it was during the middle of the primaries in 2016. And it looked like Hillary was going to win. And if Hillary would have won, and would have put another justice in that court, we would have lost and set a bad precedent. So we think that's why they turned us away. But a, another case had been built on our case. That was heard in 2018. And now every government employee in the United States of America is free from paying government unions. And if you think your government union is good, think again. Go back and research what they're doing. If you're a teacher, you can go to our website for kidsandcountry.org. Just click on union politics. It's all there. If you're in another government union, it's easy. It's easy to find what they're doing. They're, they're behind Black Lives Matter and, you know, divesting Israel and all this other, not the sexualization of our kids. So it's time that we American citizens stop funding people who hate us and hate our country. So the lower court affirmed your case now and it does not need to go back to the Supreme Court. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, when we got the four to four, I mean, that was basically a loss because the lower court ruled against us. So we went to the lower courts and we said, look, you cannot relieve us because we're trying to overturn a Supreme Court precedent. You don't have the legal authority to rule in our favor. Please just let us move on. And by God's miracle, they did. And the unions let us move on. We got to the Supreme Court in a record. It was like two and a half years. Unbelievable. It usually takes like seven years to get there unless you're, you know, President Trump or something and you've got some urgent case that gets there quickly. But um, so, so when we got the four to four, it was devastating, absolutely devastating. It, it was a loss for us, even though we won, we get a loss. Um, no, but once Trump won and then he appointed a new um, a Supreme Court justice and we had a, a majority uh, common sense on the court, another case that had literally been built on our case, it actually wasn't as strong as our case. Our case asked to stop the paycheck deduction of dues this case behind us did not ask for that, but the case did win on June 27, 2018, and now every government employee, including teachers, is freed. 
you have to pay zero to a union, zero, not a penny, and they can't fire you, and they can't take away your collective bargaining agreement because they asked to be your monopoly bargaining agent, and there's nothing you can do about that, but you don't have to pay them anymore. So um, sadly, they're still deducting uh, the dues from paychecks, which we thought was key to end that because uh, if people have to write a check every month, or pay it on their credit card or something, they're going to notice it. Whereas if it comes out of your paycheck, you don't notice it so much. Well done. You know, Rebecca, I have to tell you, all this talk about God, you sound like a domestic terrorist to me. I may have to turn <laughs> you into Merrick Garland because I'm a good comrade. Um, <laughs> and I'll be right there in the clink with you. So, you know, you, you mentioned earlier about don't ask why they do it. The unions, you know, you've made a great distinction between good teachers and the the, the evil power of the unions. And I have an analogy. You know, I love nature shows. I love watching the Discovery Channel. And when you see a predator, right, the lion does not feel sorry for the lamb. It's it's just food, right? It doesn't say, you know, I, I'm, I hate to do this to you, but I'm hungry. It's just food. And the way you're describing it, it's almost as if the union reps view the children as food. Like, I have no sympathy. I have no care. So what's the end game? Is it power and money? Is, it, is that just they're the food to get them the power and money they want and crave? Wow, I love your analogy. We need to run with this. We need to make a meme of it. Um, because the children are these precious little lambs. They are so innocent. And a lot of the teachers are innocent little lambs, too. If you think of the type of people, I taught elementary school. The type of people that teach elementary school, they just love being around little kids. They're sweet. They're naive for the most part. I mean, I'm a unicorn when it comes to elementary school teachers. Most of them go along to get along. They're too afraid to stand up to anything. So that this is the perfect analogy the unions are like a hungry raging ravenous lion with rabies and the, you know the children and these teachers are these precious little lambs that's exactly what it is and, and and you know you asked you know what's what's the main what's their end goal yes their end goal is to destroy every child destroy every family why would you do that our founders told us something very key, our American founders. They told us the only way to keep a free republic is with a well-educated, moral citizenry that can self-govern. If you are not well-educated, you cannot self-govern. If you're not moral, you cannot self-govern. And it, this is, you know, you, you have no power in your country. America's built on the people. We, the people, are the sovereign. We're the king. And we tell the reps what to do. Our reps are supposed to represent us. The unions want to flip that on its head. They want us to be a socialist country, a communist country that's ruled by a dictator. The reason they need our children stupid, they don't want to educate our children. They don't want our children to be able to read, write, compute. You notice a lot of young people don't know how to make change anymore. That's all by design. Not good teachers out there doing it. They have no idea that this is going on. But the unions who run our teacher colleges who teach these teachers, hey, you should teach kids using whole language, which doesn't work. And these teachers are like, how come my students aren't learning how to read? It's because they don't have phonics, that's why. So all these teachers are being manipulated and indoctrinated and taught in this horrific system that it's run from top to bottom. The whole education system's run by a bunch of communists who call themselves unions. So their they're, they're end goal, destroy the United States of America as it is, as it is today, a, as a constitutional free republic, so that we are no longer powerful, so that so that the world doesn't have freedom anymore. They love globalism, open borders, and all that because they don't love freedom, because they don't love God. And if you're a God-fearing person, and I'm figuring the Jewish Republican Alliance, you have a lot of God-fearing people, the best way to understand it is if you love God, then you follow his commandments and his precepts. And anything God told you to do, that's what you obey. You are a virtuous person, a righteous person, because you're following what God told you to do. Well, the unions and their friends hate God. They don't love God like you love God. Most of them are atheists. Randy Weingarten, American Federation of Children, I mean, American Federation of Teachers is a, is a Jew, but she's not practicing her faith. She's married to a female rabbi and she's, you know, taught for like a year. I looked at her credentials. She taught for maybe a year. She's not a teacher. Okay. She's a phony. She's pretending to be a, you know, a, 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 a Jew and she's pretending, well, she might, she's Jewish by birth. I'm sure. I, I can't question everything about her, but she is not living the faith. She's not living the virtues. Mm -hmm. So what the unions and their friends are pushing is an atheist agenda. 
They call it humanist. Like the humanist manifesto was written by people that hang out with the unions, John Dewey and friends. So they are pushing an atheist agenda. So what, what are they doing? What does the devil do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's the accuser of the brethren. This is their agenda. So if you want to understand the unions and what they're doing to our kids, understand the devil and what he tries to do to us, how he tries to trip us up. And then that will make us a lot more aware of what's going on. And it also gives us the, the power. We have great power to defeat this wicked enemy. Great power it, in the name of God and through the virtues he's given us. So, you know, just like, you know, the Israels walked through the Red Sea, God opened it up for them. And then he poured it in over on their enemies. We just have to stand with God because the people we're up against here, they are not on God's side. So we just have to stand firm and obey God and we can, we can defeat them. Let's do it. We're right there with you. Of course, you know, a lot of some of our cultural changes have come from some of these professors at universities with the, you know, 50 genders and men can get pregnant and, you know, Apple chiming in and showing a, 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 a version of a man who's pregnant. I mean, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. But how do you envision the ideal relationships between, if you had to wave your magic wand, like between teachers, unions, and others who make policy, what would be your ideal situation? I love this question. It's easy. It's so easy. We dump everything we have now and go back to what our founders laid out for us. So our American founders created the greatest educational system of all time. It wasn't a giant industrial complex, huge schools with football teams and unions getting in the way and, and all these special interest groups. Did you know Southern Poverty Law Centers in our schools? So is Planned Parenthood. There, I mean, there are so many hundreds of special interest groups impacting negatively our schools. Who should be running our schools? Parents. Parents, that's who should be running our schools and their local community with the help of teachers that they hire, that they choose or tutors or whatever. So in the old days, we had one room schoolhouses. My, my husband's aunt Julaine taught in a one room schoolhouse for 46 years. She told me she never once had a discipline problem and never once had a child who didn't learn because the unions weren't there. She had, she was empowered to teach well. So we just need to go back. One room schoolhouses, co-ops, homeschooling, private tutors. We had what were called dame schools in the olden days. Dame schools were basically the kids would, the kids had to learn how to read before they could come into a more formal educational setting. You can't learn anything if you can't read. So the kid, the little kids were learning how to read and then they would come into the, to a different system. So none of it was run by the government, zero. So our constitution does not allow the government to be involved in education, period. If the constitution doesn't give the authority, you don't have the authority. So the government has zero authority to be in our schools, the state, the county, the, the national, none of them should be there. So we need to remove all these departments of education. If I had my magic wand, remove all the departments of education, remove the unions, remove every special interest group involved in our schools, remove the publishing houses, remove all this nonsense. And I would replace it. And I would, I would have to have a big soapbox to help parents to understand You've been lied to and propagandized by the unions because they control the media and they told you you can't educate your own children. And they told you that that homeschooled kids, you know, don't have any social skills. All those talking points are from the unions. I've heard them from the inside. They have done everything to destroy parents, to destroy your authority. The scripture tells you that it's your job to educate your children in, in, in the faith, first of all, but you're supposed to be educating your children. So I would just need a giant soapbox to help the American people to understand, hey, it's a good thing if we destroy this public school system and start all over with what we used to have. That's what I would do. And that's a huge wish. Um, and it's going to take a huge God to help us get that done. It's a good thing we have one. <laughs> You know, Rebecca, listening to you talk, I, I have to imagine the teachers' unions have a big picture of you with public, public enemy number one there on the wall. <laughs> you know I, mean? I hope so. I yeah. hope so. Um, yeah. I feel so, the same about them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but you're upsetting the apple cart, which is not okay in their eyes. We have a great question from one of our viewers, David R. He, would he says, I would love to hear Rebecca's commentary on anti-Semitism in K-12 education. We know what's going on in college, of course, 
But what about the rampant anti-Semitism and progressive from the progressive educators that's going on to our most vulnerable and impressionable children? Yeah, David, this is a great question, and it's a hard one to answer because the unions are very sneaky, very sneaky. So most teachers have no idea this stuff is going on. But I'll just help you to understand kind of basically how the unions get their um, their agenda into America's K-12 schools and even preschools, I hate to tell you. Uh, Biden wants everybody to go preschool through junior college. That's why, so they can get to your kids earlier. Um, so what the unions do is for decades now, they have been hand selecting activists to put into America's classrooms. So there's teachers like me who in sixth grade, I knew I'm supposed to be a teacher. This is my calling in life. They go into the schools and, and they're totally naive to the fact that there's a whole bunch of teachers who've been hand selected by the unions and their radical leadership agenda. So those are the people who are pushing this agenda. So if your child ends up in a classroom with one of those activists, they're going to be taught to hate Israel. They're going to be taught to, um, you know, that, that uh, Hamas is the victim. And um, they're, oh, they're also not going to be taught the accurate history, uh, biblical history of God giving the land to Israel. They're not going to learn any of that stuff. Um, so they're also going to be sexualized. They're going to be uh, taught the CR, critical race uh, theory. Um, all of this stuff is going to go on in the classroom of an activist who's not even really a teacher. But inside classrooms like my classroom, when I was teaching, none of that is going on. You know, I was teaching my kindergartners phonics. Even when my district didn't have it, I brought in my own phonics. You know, we, we, we do a great job, regular teachers, real teachers. We're just in a corrupt system. So the system's corrupt. The unions also only protect the activists. So you've probably noticed in the news, there's some teachers who, who refuse to use the pronouns. And some of them have been fired. One of them is my friend. She wouldn't let boys in the girls' locker room. She wouldn't use the pronouns. So she got fired. She's suing them. But the unions never once came to defend her. Not once. But if she taught the kids to hate Israel, or she put a LGBT flag in her room, or she refused to teach the Pledge of Allegiance, or any of these things that are the agenda of the unions, she would be defended and protected. So, um, so that's the basics. I, I probably didn't fully answer your question. The only other thing I could suggest to you is if you go to our website for kidsandcountry.org and click on union politics, you'll be able to read a four years worth of the National Education Association's annual new business items. You'll see Israel show up in there a lot. They're, they use double speak a lot. They make it sound like they're with Israel, standing with Israel. And then the very next thing out of their mouth is that they're with Palestine and standing with Palestine. And so they're, you just have to realize these people are hypocrites. And if you're the devil and you want to sell something, you're going to come across as an angel of light. So you're going to say you're for the good, right? When on the background, you're actually doing evil. So I hope that helps, David. Thanks for the great question. And great name, by the way. My son's middle name is David. Beloved of God. <laughs> I, I spoke a, a little bit about this in my opening remarks, but one of the things that has really divided our nation, I think, is the mainstream media has decided they have abdicated their responsibility to be journalists, and they have they have taken on their role as cheerleaders for the Democrat Party. And I think between that and the school system, it's really difficult for conservatives to try to comprehend how do we get our message across? And that's one of the things that Mitch and I through the Jewish Republican Alliance are, are fighting for is education and educating, keeping people informed. But if you saw some of the headlines after this border bill came out about how the GOP blocked a bipartisan bill and now we don't know what's going to happen to Israel and like just ridiculous. <laughs> and so people will read this, they're going to say, oh, of course. That's the truth. How do we take back the narrative? Uh, how do we how do we communicate? If parents are in control, they have to be educated as well. How do we do that? Yeah, this is such a great question. Number one, we pray a lot. Prayer groups, not just you know alone, alone and with group. We got to pray a lot to break through this. It's a spiritual battle. This this isn't a. We're fighting it in the physical. But it's a spiritual battle, and the only way we're going to win it is in the spirit. Now, we have to take the, the example of David and others in the scriptures. We can't just pray and sit there and yawn and do nothing, right? What I love about David, my favorite line, and I don't have it perfectly memorized, but my favorite line is when he's like, what? These guys aren't fighting Goliath. He looks at Goliath, and he's like, 
how dare you insult the armies of the living God, right? I mean, he's like on this guy. He's this little kid. Well, he's muscular, but, uh, you know, we have to pray. We have to fight. And we have to keep speaking the truth because truth overpowers lies every single time. The scripture tells us to shine our light on the darkness. We have to be light. We just have to keep being light. And then a couple of things came to my mind while you were talking. Media matters. So the media is controlled by not just the left, by the radical left, by communists who want to destroy this country. Shame on them. If you're a media person out there telling your lies, CNN, MSNBC, shame on those people. They're traitors to the country, and we should punish them as such. Uh, but these people have groups like Media Matters that are funded by the teachers union. And they put out hit pieces on people like me and people like you, making us look ugly and weird and telling lies about us. And it's just unbelievable. So we have to stand against that. When we see these hit pieces, don't fall for them. Don't think, oh, oh, so, oh, now Rebecca's bad. No, she's not. Somebody just made a hit piece and twisted her words and made her look ugly. And somebody did it to Mitch or somebody did it to Bruce or somebody did it to Trump or whoever it is. Don't fall for their lies. We have to be wise. Read the Proverbs. Be wise, 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 right? So, so we don't fall for their, for their wicked schemes. The other thing that came to me when you were speaking, Bruce, was Gideon's army. I am so happy to be speaking to a group that knows the scriptures. This makes it so much easier. When I was a kid, everybody in my classroom knew the scriptures. But, you know, you could refer to scriptures and people knew, they knew Jonah, they knew Noah, they knew Moses, they knew Abraham. Nowadays, a lot of people are ignorant to that. So I'm grateful that this group knows. Look, you know what God did with Gideon's army? He didn't grow it. He shrunk it on purpose. Why? He didn't want cowards. And he didn't want people who weren't prepared, you know, sticking their face down in the water, letting something happen. They're not paying attention. God picked the army that he knew was going to fight the battle right. And it was a little army. So we don't have to look at their big numbers and their big control and their big power. We just have to look at our big God and say, Lord, bring, bring the people into the battle. And I'm going to tell you, when I first started fighting this battle in 1987, wow. there was nobody standing with me. I mean, there was one other teacher in my district at that time who would speak out against the unions. And then when I when we brought the lawsuit in 2013, we filed in 2013, heard at the U.S. Supreme Court in 2016. Most people thought I was wearing a tinfoil hat and it wasn't true. I'd talk about the sex ed. People didn't believe me. They thought I was crazy. Well, when the covid hit, God used that to expose a lot of evil. So we just have to keep praying for more exposure. And I don't care if someone calls me a tinfoil hat, call me whatever name you want. I will keep speaking. And so if all of us can be that way, don't let them shut you up. That's what the left does. They said, quit talking about politics in your synagogues and your churches. And guess what the left did? They kept talking about politics in their synagogues and churches. And we listened to them and we stopped. We have to talk about politics in our synagogues and churches because that's what it is to be a biblical citizen. We have to impact our culture. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> oh, no, we love it. Uh, we have another <laughs> great question here, Rebecca, from Susan R. And I'm, I'm inferring that she is a journalist. And she says, Rebecca's correct. Most of her readers' children are in Jewish day schools where God is had living presence. But they're very worried about public schools because, you know, she and her children love and proudly live in this country. And we do depend on an educated public. So her question is, what do you recommend that journalists like Susan R. do to help to help this cause? Oh, Susan, I love your question. First of all, have Mitch give you my contact information. Interview me anytime you want. And I have a bunch of other teachers that are brave now. We didn't used to have teachers speaking out. But more and more, they're getting braver, and they'll give you interviews too. Uh, I write all the time. Like I had an editorial come out today. Uh, if there's any way you can help promote the things I'm writing or other teachers are writing, that would be we would be so grateful because it is hard to get the word out. Um, and then as far as the public schools, I'm forgetting the question specifically, but um, uh, we need to stay away from public schools. I was a 28-year public school teacher. My husband, 42 years, he taught middle school and then university level. Both of us would tell everybody, run away from the public schools. We tell the teachers the same thing. Run, good teachers, run away from the public schools. And a lot of people tell us, but most kids are in the public schools. I know that. But that's why we have to start working to get them out. We need to start alternatives so that more can be rescued. Nobody wants their kid in an indoctrination center where they're getting sexualized and all that. Did I get the whole question, Mitch? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. 
And Susan is very excited to connect with you. Excellent. I'm excited too. Thanks, Susan. Uh, Rebecca, right now, you know, we have hostages that are still being held by Hamas. We have uh, Joe Biden behind the scenes asking Israel to back down. Um, you know, I, I, I am so amazed at the support that Jews get and Israel gets from religious Christians in the United States. God bless them. And what are your thoughts about what what is going on now and how America should react to this? Yeah, so first of all, I'm a Christian and I love Jewish people, just adore Jewish people. Um, I love the Torah. I, I love the whole of scripture and study it every day. And so um, God bless you all. And I'm so thankful we're all working together. We need to be working together with the same virtues, same values. Um, so, so that's the first thing. Second thing, what Joe Biden is doing is weakness in all capital letters, weakness. That's what the left does. Everything the left does is weakness. And you cannot have any kind of power over evil if you're weak. And so, you know, I have to say it because my husband says I'm always on message. The, even, even in personal times, I'm just always on message. I can't help myself. The unions put Biden into office. And it wasn't just the so-called teacher unions. It was a whole horde of government unions who put Biden, Obama, and all these people into office who are truly dangerous for Israel, our, our greatest ally, for America, and for freedom worldwide. These unions are, are infiltrating worldwide. And so we have to be really aware that they're the ones that are behind this. And so this is why this puppet, who's named Joe Biden, who, by the way, his wife is guilty of elder abuse. I know the guy, you know, he's a, he's, he's a bad guy and he, you know, deserves everything he's getting, but his wife is guilty of elder abuse. So allow her husband to be put out on stage like that. It's, it's despicable. And she claims she's a teacher. No, she's not. I will speak to that. <laughs> but, um, what's going on is horrifying. The world is watching as this weak, corrupt man who is bought off bought off by our enemies is telling our greatest ally to back off and no i reject him a hundred percent i reject what he's doing a hundred percent and i think it's important that the american people speak keep speaking out that we reject this man because he's dangerous and our enemies are watching so um power we need strength right we need power and strength and truth and we need to stand with our allies israel you know whatever it takes we stand with israel well, of course you do. And, you know, I, I have to tell you, um, living here in Nashville area for, for 16 months now, they're just like you. They're mostly Christians. Um, and when they find out I'm Jewish, they're like, we love Israel. We love Jews. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just remarkable. It, it's so different than growing up amongst all these Jews in L.A. and being here and being around people who, are, you know, you'll love this. When I got my CCW, my instructor said, in Tennessee, you're expected to have a gun in one hand, a Bible in the other. And I'm like, amen, I'm home, brother. Um, so, I, I, you know, this, this is a political question off the topics of teachers and kids and unions, but we saw last night a horrible presidential debacle. I mean, this guy, and my thought is that they did this on purpose, that those on the left have said, we're done with him, throw him to the wolves, we're not going to protect him anymore. To me... Some people are saying, how could the handlers let this happen? I say the opposite. The handlers wanted this to happen. So what do you, what do you, here's your fun prediction. What do you think is next? Yeah, so I agree with you 110%. It's just like the unions. How could this happen? No, they made it happen on purpose to, to your kids. Yes, I, I thought the same thing. They're done with Joe Biden. They want to move on. You know, they're going to promote uh, Michelle Obama or Kamala Harris or some other horrible person who who could never properly lead this great country um what do i think is coming next <laughs> oh my goodness if it's up to the left total destruction if the left gets their way if they're able to steal our election again and yes i'll say it they stole our election i live in california i am a fourth generation californian 
when the first time I voted at 18 years old, I walked into my neighbor's garage. I had to sign my name. I had to show my ID. I had to look up. I, I mean, they had to know I was who I was. And I don't believe we have had fair elections in California for over 30 years because we've had mail-in ballots that long. And and in my county, you know, Reagan County went to Hillary. Give me a break. So, you know, if the left gets their way, total destruction. I said earlier, they come to kill, steal, and destroy. They want to destroy America, and they want us to be a socialist hellhole. We would be like the former Soviet Union if they get their way. That's terrifying. I have a lot of friends who escaped communism, who escaped the former Soviet Union, and they see the handwriting on the wall. They're the ones that see this faster than anybody else. So American citizens need to wake up to that. But what could come if, if we can stop them? You know, if we stand in faith and we work hard, you know, we don't sleep in. We get up every day and we fight and we fight and we fight. It's a war. We have to realize we're in a war. We may not be in a ground war, but we are in a war for the heart and soul of America and for liberty worldwide. I mean, the same attack is happening in countries all over the world where they're being taken over by tyrants. Their elections are being stolen. So we have to stand up in faith and strength and courage and fight. And I don't know about all you, but I'm voting for Trump. And, and I want Trump to get in, in office again. That man is strong. That man calls a spade a spade. I don't care if he sends a mean tweet. We need some mean people now and then. We, I mean, they're mean. He's fighting against mean people. He's in the ring and he's throwing punches. And that's what we need right now. And I hope women will come around. There's a lot of educated women that don't like Trump because they think, oh, he's not nice enough. You know what, ladies? I hate to tell you, in the locker room, the men aren't nice and there's some mean people out there, and Trump's throwing punches, and he's doing the right thing, and I'm so grateful for him. So I hope the future is positive. I hope we can save America, because if we don't, I think we're done. So Lord help us. We're, we're all on the same team there, Rebecca. Rebecca, you are an American treasure. We are so happy to have you on our show. Tell our audience where they can get your book uh, and where they can reach out to you if they want to. Oh, you guys are so great to give me this opportunity. So my book is Standing Up to Goliath. I happen to have one sitting here. Oh, how did that happen? Uh, that's how it looks. Standing Up to Goliath, Battling State and National Teachers Unions for the Heart and Soul of Our Kids and Country. You can find it on our website for kidsandcountry.org, and that'll just lead you to where to find it on um, Amazon. So uh, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. So Standing Up to Goliath. You can find us at forkidsandcountry.org, and you can find all you need there, uh, all of my articles under news. Uh, would you please, 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 this is my homework. I'm a teacher. I can't help myself. Y'all get homework. So my homework is go to forkidsandcountry.org, click on Liberate Teachers. Please find a teacher that you know personally. If you don't know a teacher, any government employee will do, anyone paying a union. Click on Liberate Teachers. Under that, that menu item, you'll see Adopt a Teacher. It's just a flyer you can read in three minutes that teaches you how to put your arms around a teacher and help them. Give them a copy of my book so they can learn that the, the real evil in our schools is the union. It's not their superintendent. It's not you know their neighbor. It's the union. And help us to get teachers out of the union. And underneath, underneath that Liberate Teacher uh, menu item is Union Exit. It's a three-step process where we help teachers free of charge to get out of the unions. They don't have to pay them anymore. And we help any other government employee with that Union Exit too. So for kidsandcountry.org, Liberate Teachers union exit. If you would do that homework, I will give you an A plus and we can work together to save America. Thank y'all. Oh, oh, and one last thing. We're on social media, all platforms at Rebecca for kids, R E B E C C A F O R kids at Rebecca for kids. Hope you'll follow us. That's oh, fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Mitch, tell, tell us about your... Yeah, uh, so we have a thriving Nashville chapter here. We meet in a city called Franklin, about 20 minutes southwest of Nashville. So we have our next guest speaker two weeks from today, uh, Friday, February 26th. If any of you watching are in the area, or if you know anyone in the Nashville area, please reach out. We'd love to have them join us. That would be great, Mitch. We just had a great event with uh, Larry Elder here in uh, Southern California. Uh, we are still disappointed that Larry didn't win uh, in the governor's race. It would have changed California for the good. Uh, we've got a lot of big events planning. We have chapters springing up in uh, New York, in New Jersey. We have our Las Vegas chapter, our Southern California chapter, our Tennessee chapter. So the JRA is growing. And you know, we want to thank every one of you for 
being here today, for watching our show. What, what you can do, as we always say, is stay informed, get involved, and make a difference. If you want to support the Jewish Republican Alliance, go to jewishrepublicanalliance.org. We would love you to become a member, to make a donation, support us, support us and the work that we're doing. We need your help. We're fighting the fight along with great people like Re Rebecca Friedrichs. Mitch and I are there doing everything we can. We're so happy you were here today. We wish you a great weekend. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thanks again, Rebecca. Hope to see you soon. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.